Everyone. Welcome back to part 21 of The Sims 3 Love Bites. So this is definitely more of a sad part. Poor Gilbert died. I know it's so sad. Olivia is absolutely heartbroken. He was an old cat. It was only a matter of time, but still it always hurts to lose a part of the family. So Blaine is trying to comfort Olivia underneath the gazebo on this very rainy day. It's actually raining super hard right here where I live right now. So I can totally relate to the end games weather so we are at the beautiful yet kind of spooky cemetery not really sure if you can describe a graveyard as something beautiful but it kind of is so here is Gilbert's grave oh god this is so 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 depressing our little kitty cat I know he was old but it sucks that he's dead oh geez it's so sad oh Gilbert my baby so I see Blaine is trying to take care of Olivia. He is giving her a nice back rub. Yeah, he really does want to take away all of her sadness. It really does hurt him to see her being so sad, to see tears in her eyes, her mascara running down her face. It's so sad. He even wants to serenade her. That is super sweet. We will do that eventually. It's probably a little bit inappropriate to play the drums at a cemetery, you know, in front of all the dead people. Not super respectful. <laughs> so Blaine, he does have his gig tomorrow, so he definitely needs to get some practice in. Um, so he's going to go over to Wayland's Hond. See, we have our gig tomorrow, which we are obviously going to do, but we need to practice. We need to try to get with our other band members and try to get them to improve their skills as well. Olivia understands too that Blaine has to go. She needs some alone time anyways. I mean her cat just died this morning and she had a huge huge blowout with her father. She held nothing back whatsoever. She basically put her father in his place and her father she has no idea where he even went. Maybe he left to go back home. She has no idea. So Olivia, she is a little bit curious of this building. She saw this building when they arrived. Nobody is around. The graveyard is pretty abandoned today. It's raining really hard, so no one wants to be outside in the rain. So she wants to go inside and have a little bit of time to collect her thoughts. And maybe she is praying that her and her father's relationship will get better. 
or to be a little bit stronger to handle not having her father in her life, but either way, she needs to be alone and just collect her thoughts. So Blaine, he is at the bar. Oh, here is Justin. He is always changing his appearance. So let's change him into his normal attire, please and thank you. So I hope you guys did like the funeral kind of story in the beginning of this part. I thought it would be nice to mourn Gilbert's death because Gilbert obviously meant the entire world to Olivia. Gilbert was getting pretty, pretty old, so it was only a matter of time. Unfortunately, it happened very quickly this morning, and yeah, I thought it would be nice to play Gilbert's death into the strengthening of both Blaine and Olivia's relationship, if that made sense. <laughs> because I think they are so much closer now, if possible, because of this. Because Olivia, in the very beginning of this part, ooh, she found Mamatonium, Mamatomium. She found a rock, essentially. <laughs> I'll make it easier and just say that she found herself a rock. Yay! So, yes, basically, in the very beginning of this part, when Mika and Olivia were talking over the phone, Olivia did express her concern about Blaine having his very first ever exclusive relationship. Oh my god, yikes. I'm nervous. <laughs> Okay, Olivia, I'm a little bit scared for you, girl. Let's go back to you, please, and thank you. She is horrified. Oh, no, I would be horrified, too. This is so spooky here. Oh, my God, she has the paparazzi even stalking her while she is in the catacombs. Oh, God, girl, you look like a piece of burnt toast, don't you? I didn't think it was possible for her day to get any worse, but it seems like it did. Not only did her cat die, not only did she have a huge fight with her father, basically telling her father that she never wants to see him ever again to leave her apartment as soon as he can, as soon as possible. Not only that, but she also got burned to an absolute crisp. So when Olivia was inside the mausoleum, there was actually an inscription on the wall and it mentioned something about a bookcase and it mentioned something about this weird shack. Um, at the back of the cemetery, kind of out of view. It's really, really, really creepy, actually, especially with that red lighting. And there actually is a little rock down here. I noticed it earlier, so we're going to scoop that up. It might be something very interesting because the rock inside of the rock is red, if that made sense. I think the gem of the rock is red. Not sure what I'm saying anymore, but I think it's going to be something special. Yes, it's Vampire Eye. I was kind of hoping it would be since we are at a cemetery. I kind of thought that would be a good place to put one of the new late night rocks here. So yeah, here is the building. Nobody is around and Olivia is pretty curious by nature. She is a very curious young lady. So she is going to follow her instincts, follow what the inscription said, and she is going to explore that little building and see if there is a bookcase of some sort. So it looks like our band members did not show up. I think Blaine is the only responsible band member. I mean, he is the one putting all the work together. He is the one scheduling the gigs and really improving on his musical skills. Nobody else cares, but he cares. So I guess that is the main thing. So Olivia, you are still horrified. You are at the cemetery late at night as well, so this is even more creepy. So she is down this little hallway here. There's nothing really here other than the bookcase, and she is going to remember what the that uh, inscription said. So she's going to inspect the bookcase. Yeah, it is a very creepy graveyard. Yes, indeed. So yeah, she is going to see what is behind this bookcase, if there's any uh, secretive book, what this all means. She has no idea, but curiosity definitely has killed the cat. No pun intended, Gilbert. I'm sorry, Gilbert. That was a bad pun, Gilbert. Too soon, Gilbert, too soon. So yeah, like I was going to say before, when Olivia and Mika were talking, Olivia did say that um, she feels like she can't trust anyone ever again fully. And since Blaine was there for her today, she really did realize as he was holding her that she can trust Blaine. Like she can really, really, really trust him. And 
she is realizing that she is falling for him so freaking hard. It's crazy. So Olivia's curiosity is definitely really piqued right now. Yeah, so she's going to nibble at this little jelly bean here. This is the first thing that she sees, and there is something very mystical and magical about this uh, jelly bean bush. She is glowing, so she does feel almost like the sense of power that is washing over her right now. Like, suddenly all of her problems, all of her sadness is gone, if that makes sense. She has never felt anything like this before. She's almost in a daze, almost in a trance. Like, she does not know what to think, she does not know where she is, but she's just, you know, going to get herself something to eat, I guess, right? <laughs> she's not going to question anything. So yeah, she's almost feeling this really intense, euphoric, nirvana feeling where everything just feels so right with the world. She has never felt so happy in this moment mm. from this mm. power washing over her. She has no idea what to make of it. She can't even think rationally mm. right now. So Blaine has been improving his drumming skills. That is great. So yeah, Olivia, she did stumble upon this very secretive club kind of area. There is a coffin, there is another coffin, two coffins, three coffins, a bunch of coffins. And of course, this thing in the middle of the room, yeah, that is kind of the center piece of the whole room, I guess. And I think that has definitely made her very curious indeed. So, Blaine, you made some money today. That is great. He has no idea what Olivia got herself into right now. So, yeah, Olivia sees this thing, and for some reason, it really is truly drawing her into learning more about it. It just calls for her or something. So, she does see this weird thing. She has no idea what it is. Um, she is still in the trance, and I wonder if she'll even remember this place once this weird power fades away within two more hours. So maybe within two more hours, she won't even remember being here. She'll be at home. She'll have no, no memories about this place. So she is going to inspect, examine this weird contraption in this place. Blaine, you are still at the bar eating a grilled cheese sandwich, and we're actually going to bring Kent here. I meant for him to come here, actually, because I thought it would be interesting that when Kent left, Olivia, Blaine, neither of them had no idea where he went. He wasn't at the apartment, but maybe he was drinking a lot because he was really depressed. Okay, I just don't know what these candles are all about. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think she is definitely in a daze because I think you would have a stronger reaction than just being concerned about the candles, right? So as you can see there, he does want to have a drink. The big mistake. Should we have that? Yeah, let's get ourselves the big mistake. I think it feels really appropriate considering that Kent feels like he really did make a big mistake with his daughter. So he is quite drunk. We're just going to imagine that he has been drinking the entire day. So Olivia, she is going to examine this thing once again. Okay, yeah. Yeah, what is so appealing about this thing? She has no idea. <laughs> the candles. Yeah, I do like the candles. I do. And I like the candles on the floor, too. I kind of wanted it to look like a cult, almost. <laughs> I think it looks kind of cool. So yeah, I bet that bartender is a little surprised to see Olivia down here. She is the only person down here, apparently. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. So maybe later in the night, maybe that is when the real party starts. She has no idea. But anyway, she is going to go home. The power is slowly starting to fade away, and she still feels absolutely horrified by the graveyard, by everything that she saw downstairs, the weird coffins. It makes no sense to her. So that's pretty cool. Blaine got himself a free drink for being so well known. So he is going to be absolutely shocked to see Kent here. Like, this is where Kent was the whole day. He was drinking. Kent is going wild. Watch out. In fact, he is going to dance on the countertop. He is going that wild. Yes. <laughs> so this is going to be a very ugly sight. Just putting that out there. Blaine, close your eyes, baby. Close your eyes. <laughs> Things are about to get wild. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Stop it, Kent. I, I can't I can't look at you anymore, dude. You're freaking me out. <laughs> so, Blaine, he is like, what the hell is Kent doing? Wow. So, he must be absolutely out of his mind, 
absolutely drunk. He must be doing something right now. So we're going to tell him to please get off the counter. And Blaine is going to try to talk with him and tell him, like, why are you drinking so much? You know, what's going on? Blaine is quite confused about this. This is so abnormal for a guy like Kent. This perfect man. Why is he drinking so friggin' much? Olivia really could not stand the way her father was treating Blaine. Blaine was the one who actually organized the little funeral for... Gilbert, Blaine knew how much Gilbert meant to Olivia, so he wanted to make sure Olivia really got to say goodbye oh, properly God, to her yeah. cat. And Kent got so, so, so critical. He was nagging, wanting the entire time during the funeral, and he was criticizing Blaine. So yeah, they're not on good terms at the moment, but he is kind of apologizing. Obviously, Kent must be super drunk if he is if he is apologizing, right? <laughs> like he won't apologize. Apologize if he's sober, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, so they're kind of getting along right now because Kent is kind of opening up to Blaine a little bit. He is telling Blaine that he never wanted his daughter to hate him. That was never his intentions. He just really wants the best for her. He wants her to have a good life. And Blaine already knew that that Kent wanted that for Olivia. He is a pretty critical guy, but he's not meaning anything that bad by it. That's just kind of who he is. So... So yeah, he's actually going to take Kent over to the diner because it is pretty late at night. Kent is pretty drunk and he's actually going... To... Why is Olivia here? Did I tell her to come here? I thought I told her to go home. Did I accidentally tell her to come here? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's kind of weird. Okay, Kent, you're crazy, boo-boo. You're so crazy. But yeah, maybe Olivia just really wanted to be with Blaine right now. I don't know, but we're going to imagine that she didn't come here, that she went home right after the cemetery. So yeah, the boys are going out to the diner together. I bet Kent is quite impressed by the limousine. So maybe he is realizing that Blaine really is a serious musician, that Blaine does take his music, his career as a band. He takes it all seriously and Maybe we'll even imagine that Kent, when he was drinking earlier in the bar, maybe he was listening to Blaine play some music. And although the music is not something um, Kent likes, obviously Kent does not like Blaine's kind of music, he can still appreciate the fact that Blaine is good at music and he can see that Blaine is quite passionate about it. And he can also tell that Blaine cares a lot for his daughter, so... So yeah, I think, I think Kent, I don't want to say he is turning around and he's changing and all of this, but I do think Olivia's words definitely hit him super hard. Olivia never ever stuck, stuck, stoke, what? What am I saying? <laughs> she never stuck up for herself. She never told her father how she really truly felt about his meanness, essentially. So... So yeah, this was her first time ever really standing up for herself and it was kind of harsh but it needed to be done and it really did throw Kent back a little bit to hear his daughter say these kinds of words to him. Um, so, looks like we got a lot of love letters. We're going to imagine that some of these letters are from girls who are obsessed with Blaine's band. It is so, so, so sad to see that Gilbert's food dish is no longer there, nor is his food anymore. I did go around and get rid of Gilbert's stuff from the apartment. It's so sad. It looks like Justin has a little crush on Olivia and, geez, oh my god, you guys, Eli Haywood. Oh my god, I think you're attractive, but he can't tell us. Yeah, he is definitely trying to play a few more mind games. Um, oh, this is for Kent. Yeah, because Kent is pretty much a culinary genius, pretty much. <laughs> so he can keep on to that. Oh, our vampire's eye. I really want to get that cut, but I don't want to go downstairs. I'm lazy, you know? <laughs> I can relate to Olivia. I'm lazy. So we're going to get Blaine to do it for her. I think it would be really pretty to have a vampire's eye gem. Maybe it has some mystical magical powers. Who, who knows? It is a vampire's eye, right? 
So, Kent, it is super early in the morning. He is drunk. He is going to be so hungover in the morning. But he did have a pretty good talk with Blaine, surprisingly. I bet Olivia would not ever expect that. Ne neither Blaine, really. I love how Kent is going to bed in his everyday clothes. You know, he is going to wake up so hungover in the morning. <laughs> so, so, so funny. I love it. So I will be ending this part here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so, so, so much. And I'll be talking to you guys in the next part. Bye.